Yes. Hello, my name is Peter Hornby, and uh, this is a talk about type functions. So, a uh, quick raise of hands here. How many of you use type functions in C++? I saw like one hand, yeah. <laughs> Almost no one. Well, that's interesting because, well, let me ask you this question. How many of you use pointers in C++? Do you create pointer variables? Everyone create pointer variables. Great. Well, then why didn't you raise your hand on the first question? Maybe you should have, because when you create a pointer, you write something like this, int star x. So what does that star do? Well, of course, it's a built-in syntax. It comes from C. It gives you pointers. But that's actually an example of a type function that's sort of built into the syntax. So try to forget about the syntax and imagine that there's a function somewhere called star that you are calling here passing in a type, int, and what it returns at compile time is a different type, pointer to integer. So it's just a function call. Uh, I can even make it look like a function call. See? Nothing strange here. <laughs> well, of course, it's a little bit unusual because it's not the kind of function call we're used to. We're not calling a procedure written in C++ code here, passing in values or objects and getting a value back at runtime. We're sort of just asking the compiler to figure out the type at compile time. But it is still a function. I mean, pointer type, in a pure mathematical sense, it is just a function. It's a mapping of a set of types to another set of types on the right side. In fact, pointer type is a function that constructs new types from the types you already have. So we could give this a name with a macro, but uh, of course, I'm not going to tell you to use macro here because we're modern, civilized C++ programmers and we never use macros except when we have to. They're useful, but here we don't need to do that. We could get the same effect with a simple alias template. So we just say using pointer type of t equals t star. And now the function call almost look the same. It's just the parentheses are a bit angled now, which is telling you that it's something happens at compile time. But it's the same thing. So alias templates are great if you want to create a very simple type function like this that only adds something to all the types you pass into it in a uniform way. But sometimes you want a type function that returns completely different types depending on the input. We can do that too. So we're going to create a simple type function called value type. And the idea here is that if you pass it a simple type like int or double, it's just going to return that type unchanged. But if you pass it a pointer type, it's going to return the type that the pointer points to. <laughs> so it's like going to shave off one level of pointers. That's a basic idea. So to do that, strangely enough, you don't start with writing a function, but a class or a struct in this case. So I call it value type traits because it's a traits class. It has no data members, no member functions. All it contains in this case is an inner type called type, which is just an alias for the template parameter. So with this very simple class, we have just created an alternative way of declaring types. So like if we want to create an integer, we could write this as usual, or we could write this. Type name value type traits of int colon colon type x. It's the same thing. We just instantiate the template with int as our type, referring to the inner type named type, which is just int. The template yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we have just managed to turn a simple syntax that every C programmer knows into some long magical incantation of template sorcery, basically. That's how people will look at this. It's completely unacceptable. Uh, so before we can even continue, we need to get rid of this. So we, we, we can't get rid of it, but we can sort of hide it. We sweep it under the carpet. We just used another alias template, say, Value type equals long, ugly expression that I don't want to look at. And now everyone can, everyone can see, ah, it's just a function call again. <laughs> but now, since our function is implemented in terms of a templated class, we can specialize it. So we keep our original version, and then we write a specialization for pointer types using our pointer type type function, which will return the type that the pointer points to. So this is compile time functional programming. Pretty cool. Uh, okay, but where can you use value type? Well, let's look at 
find. It's one of the simplest algorithms in the standard library, where you saw it's fast. And uh, it's just linear search, right? It takes two iterators, input iterators, defining a sequence and a value that we want to try to find in that sequence. And we loop through it, dereferencing every iterator on the way until we find the value or we run to the end. So note that this function is a template and it has two template types. There's a type we call input iterator, which could be a pointer, and there's a type T. But since this is just an unconstrained template, basically we're saying, oh, there are two types. We call them this and that. <coughs> they can be the same type. They're unrelated, potentially. But that's not true, of course, because if you look inside the loop, when we dereference first, we expect to get a value of type T. But that's not part expressed in the interface, which is kind of sucks. But can we, can we even do that? Well, sure. What if you just get rid of the type T and instead say that the type of value is the value type of the input iterator type? So this is a bit better. It shows how these types are connected to each other. Uh, but let's not stop there. Let's also define another function called load. It's very simple. There are two versions of it. So the first version is for simple types, like int again. And all it does, it, it takes a value by constant reference and returns it by constant reference. So it actually does no work at all. It's free to call it, assuming you haven't turned off optimizations completely. But uh, then we add a specialization for pointers, again, using pointer type, type function, which will follow the pointer returning the constant reference to the pointed to object. And now if we go back to find here again and look inside the loop, we can replace that call to uh, the dereferencing with a call to load. Now this function will still work exactly the same if our input iterator is a pointer because we choose a second version of load. But now our input iterator can actually be an integer, which means we could do this. We could find five in the range from one to 10, or we could find a number outside of the range. And it, it's quite pretty, but of course, that's a silly example. We shouldn't use linear search to find if a number is between two numbers. But it works, and it makes a lot more sense if you apply that idea to other algorithms, like find if, or it's the first number that matches my custom predicate. Mm -hmm. Or let's say copy. I want to fill an array with 1 to 10, and so on. Uh, that you cannot do in the standard library versions of these algorithms, because integers are not valid. Uh, input iterators. It's an alternative design of iterators. Uh, but of course, uh, you can do this in your own libraries if you want to. So main takeaway from this, type functions are just normal functions. We use them all the time without thinking of them as functions, which is just because of syntax and classical notion of what a function has to be in C++. But there are many type functions in the core language syntax and in the standard library. And you can extend that. You can hack your own uh, type functions using, for example, traits, traits classes and alias templates. I still say hack, though, because in some sense this is uh, not quite natural. It's ugly. It's somewhat complicated. It's template metaprogramming instead of just programming, which would be nice <laughs> if it was. So I think it would be kind of cool if we could define type functions much the same way that we define normal functions. And I actually found the paper su su with a, uh, su uh, suggesting that that should actually be ad added to language. I don't know what chance it has of ever happening, but I think there's a good chance. And it's a really good paper to, to read uh, because with the C++20 coming with concepts and constrained uh, templates, you need a lot more type functions to de define how types are connected. So with that, I will challenge you to go look at a piece of your own code, try to find all the type functions in there. I'm sure you'll be able to. So thank you. I'll send you a talk. <laughs>